Countdown Online, and I'm joined by contributor and, of course, the founder and publisher of Daily Coast, Marcos Melitzis. Thanks again for doing this with us, buddy. Pleasure. All Thrilled right. to be here on... This is the first edition of the web show, right? This is the first edition of All anything right. we're putting on the web. Other All than, right. Uh, you're the first person other than me on the web. Isn't that right, exciting? I'm, I'm honored beyond belief. Uh, all right. Well, before you, you want to disavow that, let's get this one out of the way. What, t tell me your, your impressions here. The 90-day mark has passed, at which point the president probably should have gone and gotten some sort of congressional approval or at least put it to a vote in the House on continuing the support of the events uh, that NATO is pulling off in Libya. Give me your read on this, both in terms of a, a policy point and a political point in this country right now. Yeah, I think as a political point, uh, this... Libya sort of blends into Iraq and Afghanistan, and, and people are so focused on the domestic problems or job situation that I don't think it's registering too much. So politically, it's almost a painless uh, move for Obama to make. Policy-wise, of course, we, I, I wish he would uh, go to Congress. I wish that 90-day period would be respected. Uh, no, I don't think any president has ever really truly respected that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Obama knows that he wouldn't have the votes, and that's why I think he's ignoring it. Uh, I would be more inclined to support this uh, or conflict involvement in Libya if we weren't mired in two unnecessary wars. I mean, we're still not out of Iraq, you know, no matter how much the administration says we are. And we're definitely still uh, fully engaged in Afghanistan, even though Osama bin Laden has already been killed. The reason for us to go to war there has been satisfied. So the fact is our troops are stretched thin, our military capacity is stretched thin. These, you know, we need to bring our boys, you know, our men and women in uniform home so they can be safe and sound with their families. Uh, and Obama's not really doing them any favors thus far. That's a disappointment. You said that, that you thought he would lose... He he would lose the vote in the House. Uh, uh, when we had Michael Moore on the TV show, um, he said he didn't see the, the prospect of that happening. And I was suggesting that perhaps when they, they got bin Laden, that Obama had bought himself a certain, you know, a certain period of time, perhaps it's going to have a shelf life to it, but it is something of a, a blank check when it comes to international affairs. You really think he would be defeated in the House? I think so. I think there are enough Democrats who would vote against it. And you have a component of Republicans that are actually pretty much done with these wars. I mean, this is what John McCain was complaining about, that too many Republicans had become isolationists, he said. No, they just want to bring our men and women home. And, and uh, then you have a component of Republicans that would just love to embarrass the president. And this would be a very high-profile uh, defeat for the president. So between those who, Republicans who won out, those who want to embarrass the president, and anti-war Democrats who are sick and tired of us being in, in war after war after war, I think it would be very tough for the president to get those votes. Uh, Michael Moore made this distinction very clear, and I think we should, too, even before I ask you the question, that we're not talking about the, uh, any kind of comparison between motivations but between the way Bush cherry-picked uh, legal uh, positions to justify what it was that he wanted to do with rendition, with opening Guantanamo Bay, with torture. Uh, the motivations for this, for, for going to war in Iraq, the motivations are entirely different. That uh, uh, Presumably we could agree that whatever our involvement in Libya is, it started in a good place and, and perhaps the procedure is absolutely wrong. Having said that, there are unfortunate parallels to this idea that, the, that this president has gone and listened to opinions from his own administration, uh, legal opinions, that say, no, you've, the, you, the War Powers Act applies here, and he's just said, no, I don't have to listen to this, I'm just going to take the advice from the White House counsel. Is he doing in any way, shape, or form the same thing that George Bush did? Uh, no, I mean, uh, again, I think the motivations are critical. I mean, the Libya conflict, to me, uh, involvement is morally justified, which is why I say I'd, I'd be willing to, to support this had we not been stuck in two full, unjustified wars at the same time. I, I think the, the moral imperative is critical in evaluating whether a war is justified or not, and, and there's no question that Libya, I, I think, is, is a justified involvement. I, I think Afghanistan at the beginning, actually, was, mm -hmm. was very much justified. Iraq, absolutely not. And, of course, Iraq is the one that has bled us dry, both in blood and in treasure, more than any of these others. All right. Uh, having just gotten back from, from, from Netroots uh, over the weekend and, and the end of last week, uh, did you have a read on, on Libya from the progressive community? You know, right now, I, I got to say, I mean, the wars, people, there's war fatigue. And, and there's just sort of general... Uh, uh, feeling that, that we need to pull out of all these places. But I don't think there's a lot of feeling people can do anything about it. Obama's not listening to anybody's advice on the issue, and, and he sort of dug his heels in. And, of course, like you just said, killing Osama bin Laden gave Obama a clear and obvious and easy excuse to get out, declare mission accomplished, and uh, he has apparently decided not to do that, at least up to now. So uh, 
people sort of kind of shrug that off and say, yeah, that's, that's terrible. What can we do about it? But let's do something on jobs because really when they talk to the, you know these are guys these people at Netroots Nation they're all activists they're mm -hmm. all out on the streets knocking on doors making phone calls and uh, what they're hearing is not uh, Libya it's not Afghanistan it's not Iraq any anymore what they're hearing is jobs and that's really what they're most focused on all right I, I uh, on the television show I I kind of uh, abridged you a little bit because we were out of time uh, but you were talking about the importance of this project here, and I thought I'd give you a little chance to expand upon it and compliment <laughs> Countdown on Current a little bit more if you wanted to take it, since we have the infinity of the internet here. So here, here's, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I basically talked about how much I value the show and, and your contribution to it. So uh, I think that speaks for itself. But I, what's sort of a next step for me and Daily Coast and, and everybody at Daily Coast is to make sure that the maximum possible audience can watch this show. We know that. You, uh, that you're going to butt heads with the corporations and, and the people who run, you know, the cable companies and Comcast and DirecTV. These are sometimes going to be uh, in your in your line of fire. So we got to make sure that we put pressure on those uh, uh, cable entities, satellite entities, to make sure that you're not just available, but that you're also available on the lowest tiers uh, that they offer. So the more you know, more people can watch the show. And to that effect, on Tuesday, we're going to be launching an effort on Daily Coast to, uh, to collect signatures, collect petitions, uh, to pressure those cable companies to make sure that they carry Countdown on the lowest tiers possible. And I hope we can have your support on that. And I definitely hope we can have the support of everybody who's watching this segment right now, that they can go to Daily Coast, sign this petition, and let's put all the pressure we can to make sure that the most number of people can watch this. I'll sign that petition. I, I, even though I think you called me a butthead in there somewhere, I'm going to sign that petition. <laughs> uh, I, as always, and this has been true for many years in many different venues, uh, my appreciation for your support and the support of the Daily Coast community is almost immeasurable. So thank you again for it in this sort of formal setting. Appreciate that very much. All right, Marcus Melitzis of Daily Coast, Countdown contributor uh, with another segment with me here on Countdown Online.